This is lesson 3.2. We're factoring polynomial expressions again in this lesson. Let me just remind you what we did in 3.1 and you can go back and watch that one if you need to. We factored um, polynomial expressions that looked like this. And we specifically focused on cases where a was not equal to 1. Um, today we're going to focus on two things. The first thing being um, when do we factor out a common term first? Common, so because we didn't see any examples with that last class or last lesson, common term first. And number two, there are some special polynomials, and one of those is a difference of squares. And those look a little bit different. And when you do um, notice a difference of squares polynomial, um, they're actually quite simple to factor if you understand the pattern. So we'll look at those as well. Okay, so before we get into it though, we're just gonna do a couple of example questions. Um, these two example questions would be um, back from grade 10, um, but I'm just gonna go over them because they kind of relate to what we're doing today. So I'm gonna do these two. First one here, two x squared minus two x minus 12. So what we notice here, before I even start doing my, like whatever method I'm gonna use to, to factor, you should always, always ask yourself, should I factor out a common term? And here, the answer is yes. The reason being is because every single term here divides by two evenly. So we should do that. So whenever you have that, um, every single term dividing by something, every single term has a common factor. You do want to factor that out before you start doing whatever method you're going to use. So here we have x squared minus x minus 6. Now we're just going to focus on factoring what's inside the brackets. Now the 2 will be part of our answer, but we're going to leave it out for now. Okay, so I'm going to do the magic x method. You can use whatever method you want. Um, the a here, when we solve our little puzzle, or sorry, the a times c is negative 6. The c happens to just be 1 now. And the b is negative 1. So two numbers that add to negative 1 and multiply to negative 6 would be negative 3 and 2. Those two numbers multiply to make negative 6. They add to make negative 1. And here we don't have to divide these numbers by the leading coefficient because the leading coefficient is just 1. So I can go ahead and write my final factorization here. It would be x minus 3 and x plus 2. Okay, so this would be one case where we want to factor out a common term first. When every single term divides by the same number, you want to factor that out before you start. And notice that this number that we divided out did stay as part of, part of our final factorization, um, but we needed to take it out first. Okay, the other example I want to do to start with is what's called a difference of squares. This is something you saw back in Math 10, but it may have been a while since you did this. A difference of squares is when you have two perfect squares that are subtracted from each other. So this is actually a binomial. Um, there actually is no middle term. The middle term is essentially zero. So what we'll see um, when we do these types of questions, and you could think of it like this. Sometimes I like to show students, it's the same as if I wrote zero minus 16 n squared to remind us that that middle term is zero. So when we do our factorization, we wanna make sure that that middle term would be canceled out. So what we do in this case is we just look at the first term first. So when I multiply these two numbers here, when, if I was gonna foil out this factorization, I would want the two numbers in those positions here or the two terms to multiply to make one m squared. So I would wanna put m times m because when I multiply those, I make m squared. And the two terms that I put in this position of my factorized form are gonna to multiply to make 16 n squared. So, I'd, and I wanna make them the same. So four n and four n, when I multiply those, I make 16 n squared. Okay, now the last thing to add in is the signs in between those terms. We want to make one positive and one negative. The reason for that is because you want those to cancel out. When you foil this out, you want those middle terms to cancel to make zero. 
So that's why we do one positive and one negative. So it's the same every time. Whenever you notice you have a difference of squares, you want to set it up like that and factor it that way. So again, this is called a difference of squares. It's called difference of squares because it's literally a difference, a subtraction of two perfect squares. Okay, so we'll see a couple examples of that in this lesson as well. Okay, let's get to our first example here. We're actually gonna skip example one and we're gonna move right to example two. And we see that this looks a little bit different from some of the examples we saw yesterday or in last lesson. Ask yourself why that is. Why does this look more challenging than some of the examples we've seen before? So in this case, we see that we have some decimals. What I recommend you do if you have some decimals is we want to try and make this as easy on ourselves as possible. So I'm going to try, I'm going to use a trick to get rid of the decimals and make these coefficients into whole numbers. And what I'm going to do is divide every term by 0.1. If I do that, watch what happens. So the first term we have and I'm going to have the 0.1 come out as a common factor, okay? Just like I had the 2 come out in our warm-up as a common factor. Um, as long as I do it to every term and put it on the outside and, and make sure it's part of my final answer, it's allowed. Okay, so 1 divided by 0.1 is actually 10. So I'll have 10x squared. And what this does here is it just moves the decimal place essentially 1 to the right. But you can check with a calculator if you don't believe me. Um, so this changes to 15x and then this would change to 5. Now let's keep factoring now just as we would before. Now it looks a lot easier because we've got all whole number coefficients now um, and what we notice here is every single term actually divides by 5. So I'm going to go out, go ahead and take a 5 out. Um, if I multiply the 5 with 0 0.1 I get 0 0.5 and then I'll have 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Okay now I'm finally ready to factor. 0 0.5 is going to be part of my final answer, but it'll just be sitting on the outside. Okay, now I'm going to do the magic x method. And again, you can use any method you want um, as long as you're comfortable using it. Okay, so here's a, here's b, here's c. So a times c is 2 and b is negative 3. So the puzzle I'm looking to solve is two numbers that multiply to 2 and add to negative 3. So those two numbers would be negative 2 and negative 1. When I multiply them, they equal 2. When I add them, they equal negative 3. Perfect. Solve the puzzle. Next step, if this number is not 1, we need to divide by it and reduce. So I'm going to divide each of these by 2, and we're going to reduce if possible. So on the left here, you can divide by 2 on the top and the bottom. We get negative 1 over 1. And over here, we can't reduce it, so I'll just rewrite it. Okay, now we're ready to write our final factored form. And the 0 0.5 is going to come along here. And then the two constant terms, remember, are going to be these numbers on top. The numerator, so I'll have minus 1 and minus 1 as my constant terms. And then the denominators are going to be my coefficients in front of x. So I'll have 1x and 2x. So here's my final factorized form, 0 0.5 on the outside, x minus 1, 2x minus 1. The key thing is here, factoring out, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so we can see the entire example. You want to factor out a 0 0.1 from the beginning, and the reason you want to do that is because it made each of these coefficients whole numbers which is much easier to work with compared to decimals. Some students have asked me in the past, could I have started by dividing by, by 0 0.5? Totally, yeah. That would have actually saved you a step. You would have ended up straight into step number two, and so then you would have continued from there. Okay, um, let's go ahead and do the second example. We don't have enough space here, but we'll do it just above. Okay, so the second example, I'm going to copy it down above and then we'll do it. So it's x squared, so this is number 2b, so it's x squared minus 17 over 3x, 
and then negative 2, minus 2. Okay, here we're in a similar dilemma with our factored, with our polynomial wheel here. We've got a fraction, and fractions are really difficult to solve that um, magic x puzzle with. So what you want to do here is divide by one third. Divide every single term by one third. But what we have to remember is dividing by one third, when I divide by a fraction, it's equivalent to multiplying by three. The reciprocal, three over one or three. Okay, so that when I take the one third out, it's gonna be part of my final answer. Okay, as long as I do it to every term and keep it as part of my final answer, I haven't um, broken any rules here. But essentially each term in the brackets is gonna be three times what it was before. So I'll have three x squared minus, and here the, the threes will actually cancel out. So I'll just have 17 x and I'll have minus six. So essentially every term got multiplied by three when I took out the one third. And you can just double check that that's true. Sometimes students find that hard um, to see, but if you multiply this back in, notice you'll get one x squared, you'll get 17 over three, and you'll get negative two. So it does work, okay. All right, now that all my coefficients are whole numbers, I should check if there's any common factors here that I should divide out. Three, 17, and six, no, none of those have any common factors. So I can continue with my magic x method. So I'm gonna just make my x here. I'm gonna write ac, in this case it's negative 18. My b is negative 17. Um, the two numbers that satisfy this puzzle are negative 18 and positive 1. I multiply those, it equals negative 18, add them, it equals negative 17, perfect. And I'm going to divide by my leading coefficient. We've done lots of these now, so I'm going a little bit faster. Okay, so we reduce if we can. So this one we can divide by 3. This one we can't reduce. I'll just leave it. And remember, the numerators are going to be my constant terms in my final answer. And don't forget about the one third. We factored that out at the beginning, so it needs to be part of my final answer. I'm just highlighting it in yellow so we don't forget it. So my constant terms are negative 6 and positive 1. And then my coefficients in front of the x squared are 1x and 3x. So we'll have x minus 6 and 3x plus 1. So there's my final factorized form. Okay, so that's those are the two. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so we can see both of those examples one more time. When you are, when you have a polynomial that has either decimals or fractions, you want to use this little trick where you essentially divide out by the decimal or the fraction, and that will make all of the coefficients turn into whole numbers and then you can factor like normal. So it's just a little trick that you do whenever you see fractions or decimals in your polynomial. Okay, let's go ahead and just do one example where we have a, we're going to skip that one, um, example four. This is just one final look at um, a difference of squares. I'm actually going to add one here. I'm going to add one that says um, 49 over 4 x squared minus mm, 25 y squared, let's say. Okay, so I'm adding one in. Okay, all right, so I'm going to do a and then I'll make this b. Okay, here's a. What we notice right away is this only has two terms, so and those are both perfect squares. So this is a difference of squares question. Um, what we do in this case is we don't do the magic x method. We just look at each of these perfect squares, and we just think of two numbers for this first one that are going to multiply to make 16a squared. So that would be 4a times 4a. When we multiply those, it equals 16a squared. Then we look at the last term or the second term, 9b squared. We think of two terms that would multiply to make 9b squared. So 3b, 3b. And finally, because this is a difference of squares and that middle term is missing, it's zero, we want to make one of them positive and one of them negative so that when you do foil it out, that middle term will cancel and be zero. There you go.
So you don't have to do um, any special method here for these difference of squares questions. You just have to notice that they're difference of squares and then factor it that way. Okay, what if you have a fraction? You have two options if you have a fraction. One option is to leave the fraction in there if it's a, so I'm gonna kind of show both methods here. I'm gonna do one answer here and one answer here. One method is to leave the fraction as is and just factor doing what I just said. So the book actually prefers this way, but I'm gonna show you another way if you don't like working with the fractions. So here, we're gonna think of two terms that when you multiply them, they equal 49 over four x squared. So that would be seven over two x and seven over two x, because when I do seven times seven, it's 49, two times two is four, and the x times x would be the x squared. Okay, and then the 25y squared, that's gonna be 5y and 5y. One of these is plus, one of these is minus. There you go. So that's factoring, leaving in the fraction. Or we could do the little trick that I mentioned before and divide the fraction out. If we divide the fraction out, this is what it looks like. Remember, when you divide the fraction out, essentially, each term gets multiplied by four. So this would look like 49x squared minus 100y squared. And then you could factor like normal. And this happens to stay a difference of squares. So we're gonna factor it like this. This would be seven x and seven x to make 49 x squared. And then we would have 10 y and 10 y to make 100 y squared. One of them's plus, one of them's minus to cancel out that middle term. And there we go. So we actually have two possible answers. And both of these are actually equivalent. If you multiply them out, you'll see that they both equal the original difference of squares polynomial. Um, either is acceptable, whatever you prefer. If you like factoring out that one quarter and you don't like dealing with fractions at all, go ahead and do that. If you are fine with just leaving the fractions in your brackets, that's cool too. Either one is fine. So I'll just write here equivalent answers. Okay, and that's the end of the lesson.